We mostly do spraying from the Argos, spraying with glyphosate and wetland approved herbicide to kill the Phragmites, and then we mash it down with a larger machine called a Marsh Master, which has a larger footprint wider and pulls a roller behind it, which very effectively smashes the, the Phragmites down as it's done out here. And the point of, of, of knocking it down is to hasten decomposition. Uh, it, there's so much silica in the Phragmites that it'll stay standing as it has along the canal there where we weren't able to mash. It'll stay standing for several years. So knocking it down hastens decomposition, lets the sun get to the soil, warm it, and stimulate the seed bank of seeds that are already there, native seeds, uh, and get them growing again. So what Zach's doing out there on that Argo, that amphibious uh, six-wheeled vehicle, is he's mashing the Phragmites down along the canal. Back in the 30s, canal, a sewer line, essentially, a raw sewer, dumping raw sewage into the, the marsh was um, dug. We've mashed all the frag down, you see in the landscape behind me, but along the canal, uh, the contractor we had with this 6,000 pound marsh master wouldn't go near there. So we're trying to do that cleanup. What we plan to do is plant a native plant called burry. It's sort of similar to a cattail along here. And then this is going to be a paddling uh, ecotourism destination for folks to paddle in the marsh. Which you know, all this landscape you see eventually is going to grow and green up into an herbaceous marsh. This is going to be a huge, huge uh, win for Northeast Ohio. This is the history of the marsh. Is, uh, Plants like burried and uh, swamp mallow and joint reed grass. 60 species is really exciting. And so our strategy is to get this fragment down. What that does is it daylights the, the ground, it allows that long soil, the seeds in there, to be exposed to sunlight and some air and warm temperatures. And bam, building they'll come. These plants are coming up. We've got rails coming back, bitterns coming back. These are dangerous species here in Ohio. Resources Division of Natural Areas and Preserves, and the division uh, protects 136 state nature preserves in the state of Ohio, and these preserves represent Ohio's most uh, significant ecological, geological features and habitats, uh, as well as protecting some of the rare, endangered, threatened, and endangered plant and animal species that call that that habitat home. And so we're here, or I'm here today with uh, the Cleveland Museum of Natural History and the Nature Conservancy at Mentor Marsh State Nature Preserve uh, in Mentor, Ohio. And what we're doing is we're working together with the Cleveland Museum of Natural History to uh, do some follow-up treatments um, on the Phragmites, the common reed grass, which is invasive in the marsh. And so we're utilizing the equipment out here today to just compact and smash the uh, dead stands so that they will uh, decompose quicker in the marsh and uh, hopefully uh, next year we'll see a lot of native species uh, popping up through the, through the soil through the seed bank. So the museum's been involved in the Mentor Marsh since uh, 
early 1960s. And since and during those inventories, we've come, we've inventoried all the plants and animals that were here. And even despite the, the billion stems of Phragmites, we've got 20 state listed species that are here, and they're still here today despite all this Phragmites. And so, uh, the one of the big ways that we found out uh, that we could restore the marsh was in 2003 after that last fire. We called that the Phoenix Fire, essentially, when it burned uh, about 400 acres, and it burned the museum's $80,000 Wake Robin Boardwalk. And we were like, oh, bummer. Um, and so it was then that we decided to do something. We had the frag was growing over that boardwalk, and so what kind of experience we had? It wasn't exactly the most exciting. And we decided to push the frag mites back. We used hedge trimmers and herbicide. And we pushed it away from that boardwalk several feet on either side. And lo and behold, out of the seed bag comes all these new plants. And it was that ha-ha moment. We were like, oh my gosh, there's something to be more to it. And we also we used aquatic approved herbicide, and leopard frogs moved in right away that hadn't been in that site at all. And they're still there today, and they're breeding. And it's really exciting to see. Um, we've come a long ways with the science behind it. This was just mashed last week, and so it's much younger. It was also sprayed just last fall. And you'll see that that frag there still has its flower heads on it. It's quite orange. Um, it's much more uh, pliable. It's not reached that brutal stage. So, as an example, um, look at the ground here, you see it in different colors. This Phragmite is a little bit older, it's now brittle, it's now falling apart, and uh, we're waiting for that to rot down to expose that muck soil that you see right there. That, that black is where the, the seed is, and I'm going to tease that apart. fascinating and I'm sure David has told you is this that this was the first state nature preserve that was dedicated um, when the division was was founded and everything came together and so over almost 40 years now uh, has gone by so it's really it's really exciting to see things kind of come full circle um, back in you know 19 the early 1970s this was a very significant swamp forest and marsh and uh, of course it's gone through some changes with the invasives but now we're, we're fighting that back and we're gonna see what once was so valuable and worth protecting uh, be uh, here again so that's what's really exciting about it. So. Explode on the seabank in these little pots. So it's really 